Hey everyone, welcome to Things Lucy Reads. I'm Luce and this is my February wrap up. Yeah, sorry this is so late. I've been rather lazy when it comes to videos and I was actually going to do a lot of things the previous two weeks, but then on Saturday morning I found out that Leonard Nimoy had died and it kind of just threw me off and I didn't really get much done at all because I was, it just, everything felt kind of surreal after hearing that. So yeah. Um, this video will be in two parts because I read quite a few books in February. The first part is books that I read as ebooks slash no longer have physical copies with me, etc, etc, you know, that kind of thing. Okay, so the first book that I read in February was actually one that I'd been reading on and off throughout last year and I finally finished it and that is The Dwarfs by Marcus Heights, which is the first in a um, high fantasy quadrilogy about dwarves, obviously. Um, it was really, really good. It's about this one dwarf that was raised away from any of the dwarf kingdoms and he doesn't really know which one he belongs to. And then he gets sent on a mission by the, um, magus who raised him and kind of encounters other dwarves and finds out that he's supposedly the heir to this, this, you know, the whole kingdom, supposedly. Um, being named heir by the Dwarven High King. So to prove his claim, he and the other candidate for the throne have to go on this quest and kind of save the entire land from the big evil force. Um, it was really good. I gave it five stars. Um, it was translated into English from German and it was, I didn't even notice that it had been translated. It was a fantastic translation and the story was just really good. I loved every single one of the characters. They were like um, Tolkien's dwarves, but also not. They were like them just enough to be familiar, but then they had their own characteristics as well. The main one being that they actually weren't very short. I think the average height is about five foot five, which is about that tall. So yeah, they weren't actually short. Um, so yeah, um, I borrowed that from the library, which is why I don't have a copy here, but I am really excited to get on with the rest of the series. And if you've been thinking about reading that series, you definitely should because it was really great and I really liked it. The next book I read was actually an e-novella. It was The Snake Charm by Laura Lamb, which is the first in her four novella series that ties in with her books, Pantomime and Shadowplay. Um, and it just kind of had a bit of backstory about Dristan the Clown. And that was, that was pretty good. I gave it four stars. I can't really tell you much about it because spoilers, but it was good. The next book I read was Anatomy of a Misfit by Andrea Portez, which I read because it was a traveling book. Um, I don't have that anymore because I sent it on to the next person a couple of days ago. I gave it three out of five stars and I made a full review for it, which I will upload at some point and link down below. The next thing that I read was like an audiobook and it was series one of Fry's English Delight, which is a radio show and it has um, episodes of half an hour where Stephen Fry talks about the English language and certain parts of it and how it evolved and stuff. Um, and that was really, really good. I gave it five stars. My favorite part of that was um, finding out which words and phrases that we use in everyday life that actually came from sailors. That actually, they originated as nautical terms and phrases. That was really, really interesting. Um, it's on Audible. The whole series are not very expensive, um, less than the price of your monthly subscription, actually. So, <clears throat> Yeah, if you like Stephen Fry or into linguistics, then I would definitely recommend it because it was really good and just really entertaining and educational. The next book I read was also an ebook, and that is Perrault's Fairy Tales by Charles Perrault. It was the translation from French into English by Gustave Doré. Um, I liked them. I gave it three out of five stars. I think I like them better than the Grimm versions because um, they generally have like proper happy endings and it's not like a half a happy ending where someone else has died or been horribly maimed. It's, you know, like happily ever after as you expect fairy tales to be. Um, the other thing I liked was that his um, female characters were sort of like damsels in distress, but they also were able to take charge of their situations and um, kind of had some form of control over their own lives, which I really enjoyed. Um, I only gave it three stars. 
I downloaded this as a free ebook from the iBook store um, and the only reason I gave it three out of five stars is because the translation was a little unwieldy. Um, I, I mean, I didn't have real problems with it, but it just kind of, they took me a while to get through it, even though they were all very short because just the language that was used was really very strange because it had been translated so long ago. Um, but yeah, they were, they were rather enjoyable. And then after that, and the reason that I actually read, went and read all of Perot's fairy tales is because I got this book, Bluebeard by Angela Carter, um, which is a retranslation of Perot's fairy tales. Um, this was really good. I gave it four stars. When I originally started reading it, I didn't really, I was a little bit baffled because it says on the back that they're playful and subversive retellings of Charles Perrault's classic fairy tales. But it's not, I suppose it's a retelling in the truest sense of the word, but it's not what we on Booktube call a retelling. It's a retranslation. So she has translated the works from French into modern English and that's all. And I don't really know where they got subversive from because as far as I know, they're exactly the same. The only things that I can't really compare are the morals at the end because Perrault's were just really kind of strange and I didn't really kind of understand all of those. Um, but yeah, this is just a selection of the Perrault's fairy tales that she has translated. You can get all of them in a bigger book and I think I actually will because her translations were fantastic. They were so easy to read. I flew through this book and just, yeah, it was everything that I liked about Perrault's fairy tales and nothing that I disliked. So I definitely recommend Angela Carter's translations. The next book I'm going to show you is a graphic novel and it is Miss Marvel Volume 1 by G. Willow Wilson and someone Alphona, I forgot my name, Adrian Alphona, that's the artist. Um, this is about a 16 year old girl called Kamala Khan who um, gets superpowers. Um, her idol is um, Captain Marvel, which is why she's called Miss Marvel. And she kind of has to juggle going out and saving the world with her newfound superhero abilities with um, the expectations and requests of her family. Um, Kamala is Muslim, which is the reason that I bought this. I haven't read very many books with Muslim protagonists. I don't know very much about the culture and I really want to. So I thought it was a really good um, place to start, I guess. And also diverse superhero comics are so important and it's really important for people who are interested in diversity to actually buy them. Otherwise they won't sell very well and they will get canceled and it will go back to being rich white men with man pain, which no one wants. Um, yeah, so it was it, it was a really good beginning of the story. I can't really fault it. The art style is quite interesting. It's not really like any of the other superhero comics I've read before. Um, so that was really good. I really liked it. Um, but yeah, it, I, I really do recommend this comic because I genuinely enjoyed it. I gave it four out of five stars. It's not because there was anything implicitly wrong with it, but because I don't like giving the first volume of a graphic novel series five stars because often there's a lot of room for improvement. And if I give the first one five stars, then there's no way to kind of illustrate that the other volumes are better, you know, on Goodreads. I can't, yeah. Anyway, um, like I said, definitely recommend this. The second volume is coming out pretty soon. So yeah, if you think this is interesting, you should definitely get right on it because I don't want this one to get canceled like Batwoman was canceled. So yeah. And then the next book is Girlfriends, The Complete Collection, Volume 2 by Milk Moran Aga. I love this series so much. I gave this volume five stars, I believe. Yes, five. Um, just, it was such a cute ending, um, the ending was a little abrupt if I'm, if I'm honest with you, but just, it was so cute, I had so much love for this, and yeah, I'm definitely going to seek out more manga like this in the future because this was just adorable and perfect. So that is all for this part of the video, and I will see you in the next part. Bye everyone.